All right, if you're wanting to get into fishing and don't know much about it, uh, this is going to be a decent tutorial for you. We're going to go through crafting the improvised fishing rod and reel. We're going to go through crafting some of the floaters, hooks, how to get bait, and all the different types of line that there is. It's going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial, and hopefully it will suit some of your needs. So if you've been having any trouble or don't know what the hell you're doing, stay tuned right after the short little intro. All right, in this tutorial, we're going to go through a little bit of stuff that is going to be a bit in-depth. Um, you may not need to know all this. Maybe you just want to find out uh, just the specifics um, that's in here. But I also do a little bit of a trial and error through different supplies that you can use. For most of the supplies that you have to find, I try and find out what kind of condition you need to use, what works, what isn't working during this update, as well as once we get into the fishing, um, using different lines, different types of hooks, um, different bait, how to collect bait. Uh, we go through a fair amount of stuff. There is some stuff that I couldn't find. Um, I don't spawn anything in, so I want you to know that I have searched and um, went through, spent days and days of searching to find all the stuff that I need for this and to make this tutorial. So this is, this tutorial is a lot of work. So if you make it through the tutorial, if you find anything that you like, and if you find it helpful in any way, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Um, Ooh, also at the end, I do a little bit of a bonus on cooking, um, since you might as well learn how to cook the fish. And if you're having trouble with cooking, it's actually in here too. All right, so without further ado, let's get into crafting. First up is the improvised fish rod. All right, head into your inventory and hit number two for crafting. And under the basic survival skills, you'll need some type of rope. So tree bark rope, your rag rope or rope. Two long wooden sticks, not the short sticks, has to be the long ones, wire, and two nails, and then some sharp tool for crafting. We'll test all types of ropes. Thread will not work, uh, but we'll keep that because uh, you'll need it for later. Let's put the two long sticks in the inventory. Two tree bark rope. Let's try a used one. This one only has 2 out of 10, as opposed to the regular 10 out of 10. And let's do a 10 out of 10 wire. Two nails that are 100%. And then we've got a knife here. All right, we'll back out a range out of all the other items so we can see if it'll craft. And it looks like it has yellow lines through it, so we have something in our inventory that isn't allowing us to craft it. Now double checking, it has highlighted everything that we have in our inventory, but something is not allowing us to craft it, so let's check it out. Now my guess is that it's the shady rope that I have, so let's trade that out. And pull this other tree bark rope in, because it's a full one. And yes, it's grayed out, so yes, we can craft that. So I just hit escape so that I don't craft it, because let's try the other some other inventory items. Let's test out a little bit worse wire. And yeah, it looks like that can craft it. So you can have a lower percentage of wire. Now let's try some shittier nails. And it looks like that works as well. All right, let's try two crappy nails and see if that makes a difference. And yes, it seems like that works as well. So you can have crappy nails. That's totally fine. You can have at least a five out of 10 for wire. Now let's try some actual rope and I've got a lower percentage of rope. So let's try that. 
And yeah, that even works. Okay, let's throw in some improvised rope. And let's see what happens here. And yeah, it looks like that's going to craft as well. Pretty easy. Okay, so it looks like everything actually kind of works really well. It doesn't have to be that great of a percentage except for the ropes. That's kind of the big thing that needs to be uh, a higher percentage, especially if you're using any of the improvised ropes. So if you craft any fresh improvised ropes, uh, they're all going to be 10 out of 10 or they're going to be like the highest percentage. So um, yeah, I would suggest just using any craftable ropes that you can and that would be absolutely perfect. The rest can be pretty shitty um, just as long as the ropes are, are high quality. All right, let's get on to the improvised fishing reel. This one is pretty straightforward. You need two planks, two corks, and four nails. So obviously if all the nails are 100%, like you do when you grab them right out of a nail box, they'll automatically be 100%. Of course, that's gonna craft. So let's see what happens if we take a couple nails that are a little bit lower quality and see if it still crafts. And yeah, everything seems to work. So this one is actually really simple to do. I didn't have a chance to find low quality corks or nails. You can easily find higher quality corks in wine racks that are in some of the houses. But most stuff doesn't need to be 100% for this, so that's great. Before we can start fishing, we still need about four more things. They're actually really easy to make. Uh, the toughest one would be the improvised float. Um, but honestly, it is super simple. You just need a cork of any kind, um, as well as a needle. And you can do a bone needle, super easy. Um, crafting from a bone of anything, even a puppet or just use a needle that you find and it can be a total shitty needle um it doesn't matter it's very very easy to make the improvised float is probably one of my favorite floats easiest to see it's super great uh, next thing you need is fish hooks and you can find them in packs or you can make your own with a can any any type of can um that's really easy uh there are two different types of floats that you can find. The small ones, uh, I think, are just total shit. They, you can hardly see them at all. But the bigger ones are very, very nice, just like the improvised float. Pretty easy to spot. Okay, the fish line, you can find them in spools. When you find a spool, you just right-click and take out the fish line, and it'll drop in front of you. So you just pull that into your inventory. And so there's different types of spools and different thicknesses. And if you have a any type of rope, I'm going to use thread to craft the improvised fish line. The spool that I'm using only has two uses left. So it's a pretty low quality spool of thread that you could find. And it works just fine. And you'll still be able to craft the fish line. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. You don't need a full spool of thread. It's pretty easy as well. Now that we have that crafted, let's put stuff together. So the improvised fish rod, you can throw that in, in your hand. And next we're going to attach the improvised fishing reel. It all is in sequential order. It makes a lot of sense. So the fishing reel has to go on the rod. So that goes on next. Then you have to put line on. You can't attach anything else until you put the line on. And then the next two things, the floater and the hook really make no difference. You can put them on in either order that you want. Now, one last step before you can start fishing is you have to bait the line. Otherwise, you can cast it, but you can wait forever before you will actually catch anything. And I don't even know if you actually will. Uh, so I'll show you how to grab some bait. For bait starting off, you can search dry logs or the river's edge. Um, in dry logs, you'll find crickets, grasshoppers, larvae, 
and along the river's edge you'll find worms. These are perfect for starting and you can just turn them straight into bait and you can start fishing. It's really quite simple. Um, you can also turn other types of food into bait as well. Um, but once you essentially catch your first fish, then you can keep fishing for quite a long time, actually. So I would really say that the bait par portion of fishing is actually probably the easiest for you. The real only difficult portion when it comes to bait is if you're trying to catch a specific type of fish. And you can look online to see which type of bait works for what type of fish for a better percentage of that chance of trying to catch the fish. But essentially just catching a fish to eat um, is actually not that hard. One of the main reasons that I got into fishing for scum is mostly because it's the most accessible way to get vitamin D, which I was finding the most difficult where I spawned. And fishing is, uh, there's a chance that you can catch the right type of fish to get more vitamin D. So that's kind of why I got into it. And now I just catch, try and catch that type of fish. All right, with all of this knowledge, I would say that you are about as close as you can get to starting to fish. Uh, so let's get going on that. I'm going to teach you a little bit about the different types of fish line that you can get, what that means. But first and foremost, the most important button on your keyboard is the escape button. And so as we get into learning the fish lines, uh, we're gonna go from weakest to strongest fish line. Um, but you're gonna start off, if you've crafted the improvised fish line, that is going to be the weakest so you can only really catch smaller fish. All right, you've just went through all the work of making or finding all of your fishing gear that you finally need and you can start fishing. And this is the scariest part of it all. The fish was too big and it just broke your line. Now, what does that mean? Well, that took your line, your hook, your floater, your bait. It took everything. It sucks, but it's actually not that bad. Yes, it. if that happens, it totally takes everything. But if you hit the red and you hit escape, this is what happens. Actually, it's not too bad. Yes, it did take your bait, but you still have everything. So... So honestly, if you catch a fish and it jumps right into the red, just hammer escape once and you'll be completely fine. Just make sure that you bring extra bait and you'll have nothing to worry about. So far in my trials, it doesn't seem like the type of fishing rod, fishing reel, or the type of hook make much of a difference that's even really noticeable for uh, how easy it is to catch fish. Uh, it all kind of depends on the line, as much as I can tell, at least in this update. So I'm going to quickly go through what each line kind of represents and how you can notice the difference and a little bit more about the size of fish that you can you can catch. The improvised fish line and the thin weak line are obviously the weakest. And this is how it shows up when you catch fish. Improvised fish line. Thin fish line. As far as I can tell, the size of fish difference that they catch is pretty insignificant. It's all pretty small fish. Medium fish line. Thick fish line. And there's even a 0 0.5 millimeter thick fish line that I haven't even found yet. All right, now where you go fishing is in ponds of basically any size, uh, bigger rivers and the ocean. Uh, but you can't, as far as I know, and you can correct me on this if you want, uh, you can't, as of this update, um, catch anything in small creeks. But you can search for bait along small creeks. So keep that in mind. How do you fish? All right, so escape is your 
favorite button, of course. Uh, so once you get your rod in hand and everything is attached onto the rod, so your line, your floater, your hook, your bait, then you're going to left click once, and you can do this in first person or third person, doesn't matter. Uh, left click once, that engages the fishing rod, and then you press and hold left click, and you will cast. The longer you hold it, the, the further it will cast to whatever your max is. And then basically you just wait. If you want, you can use the zoom in or focus mode with the rightmost button so that you can see your floater. But you basically wait until the floater drops in the water and then you hit your left mouse button again to hook it. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If it's a bigger fish, you have to scroll your mouse wheel in slowly. The more you scroll in, the tighter the line and the closer it will get to breaking. So you just have to be really careful with this. The fish is going to pull harder and softer. And so you can kind of work the wheel with that. Just remember, if it ever feels like it's getting sketchy, just hit the escape button and you'll release the fish and all you did was lose your bait. So wheeling the mouse wheel towards you reels in and wheeling the mouse button away from you reels out. It's, it's really quite common sense. Now, as you're waiting for the fish to bite, once the floater goes down when it bites, it's okay if you don't catch it the first time. Don't worry about it. If the fish gets away, it actually doesn't do anything to your bait. It doesn't take your bait. You still have it. It's totally fine. It's actually a lot easier than it used to be. You may need to recast, but I don't know if you necessarily need to. Just wait for the floater to go down again and then tap the left mouse button and just be ready on escape to hit it just in case the fish is too big for your fish line. And then other than that, reel the puppy in and either release it or keep it. It's pretty cool when you see a monster fish in your hand. Now, if you have a decent setup for your fish line, uh, so you have nice thick fish line, when you're coming up to a lake or wherever you're going to fish, use the focus mode and your right mouse button, and you can actually see ripples in the water where and a fish will float up from the water. And that'll show you kind of where the bigger fish is. And so you can kind of go and fish there. Now, I'm not sure if it's the exact same as it used to be, but it seemed like now with this new update, that that is where you're more likely to catch a fish faster. But I'm not sure if that is only where the big fish are. It used to kind of freak me out in the old versions because that's where the big fish were. So I didn't have enough skill or the right type of line to try and fish for the big fish. So I was always fishing away from, from that. But it seems like now it is just the more popular place in the water that fish are i don't think it necessarily matters um but you can test that out yourself let's get cooking all right if you don't know how to chop then i don't know how the hell you made it this far in the game at all uh so chop up your fish and let's get cooking so the skewers portion of this game is different i'm sure it's going to change back or something but it actually got way easier uh for cooking uh, but it's going to take you some time so be prepared and do this in a safe place but build a fire and i'll show you how to cook once you have the fire made something that you do not need anymore is extra wood to make skewers uh they are just automatic but the cooking element is actually quite a bit different than it was before and it adds a lot more complexity to the nutrition value of what you eat and it is cool i gotta say i think this is actually really cool and i was waiting for this to this to happen so this is pretty wicked cooking food has had a complete overhaul in this update and warming and cooking food is not at all like it used to be 
Um, as you can see in the top, you have a cooking tab and that tells you what recipes you know, but that isn't even what you use to cook. Uh, you do not use that tab. Thankfully, your cooking source has a drop down menu and you cook from there and it'll open up the utility spot. Click on the big grayed out area that has the plus sign and that will be adding a recipe. Drag the fillet into the open space and hit the little chef hat to start cooking. And the skewer automatically pops in and you basically wait. As far as I can tell, the timer that is on the cooking utility spot, so the skewer that we're cooking, is in relation to how fast time is in the game. These are not real life minutes. So be prepared, it is going to be faster than what it actually says. Another nice aspect of cooking, now they have taken away the, the different heat that comes off of different fuel sources for the fires. So that's really nice. So everything that will cook at a, a reasonable temperature, but you do have to wait a certain amount of time. And the burning aspect or the poorly cooked or whatever it is, that's a whole different mechanism now. It is all based on time and when you take it off the fire. As of this update, I've noticed three different cues that are visual to tell how far along the cooking process is. The first obviously is the timer. The second is going to be the blue bar that fills up and eventually turns green. And then the third is the actual picture itself. From left to right, it will start to fill up with color as it gets more and more cooked. When it goes green, don't panic. Do not panic. You don't have to take it off right away. Um, there is going to be, depending on what you're cooking, there is going to be uh, different points to when it gets to zero of when you'll want to take things off. And you're going to have to play around with that because that gets way more complicated. Uh, but there is different conditions of it being cooked um, right up to excellent. So just be aware that for some things you actually want to wait till it hits zero 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 and take it off right at that point. Um, but that is not everything. Play around with that. Enjoy. And that kind of covers the whole video. Thank you very much for tuning in this entire time. Make sure that you hit the like button. Please comment if anything helped. If I missed anything, I would really appreciate you commenting. It really helps my channel out a lot. I'm trying to grow it. Um, I love making these videos. They are a lot of work. So if you made it through, if there was something that helped, please hit the like button. And thank you very much for tuning in. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, make sure that you hit comments and I will read and reply to everything. I always do. And thank you very much. This is Anatomy Jack. Thank you. We'll see you next time.